I'm Yolanta Kunikowska, I'm nuclear medicine physician, and now we'll be a step forward before your surgery, and we'll be talking about the possibility to diagnose the tumors before uh, liver transplant or uh, planning surgery. Starting with FDG, it was mentioned before that FDG is very good for this diagnosis of cholangiocarcinoma. Unfortunately, it's not so good the tracer to diagnose HCC. Why? Because we have the high liver background, and usually HCC is so of the low expression of uh, uh, GLUT1 and GLUT2, and uh, with low metabolic activity. But uh, it is another uh, topic with, if we look for this distance metastasis. As you can see, the, with the distance metastasis, we have quite good sensitivity and specificity. Uh, the more important for the clinical point of view, this uh, FDG update could be very useful for the prognosis of the patient because patients which with the uptake of FDG have the shorter overall survival. So, in the end, we know that it's high sensitivity for the extrahepatic lesions, but low, unfortunately, for these primary tumors. Import, and this is the example, and as you can see, uh, with the MRI, typical, this, uh, this uh, sign with the washout of the tumors, but on the PET image on the 8, you could see no uptake. This is quite typical that we see uh, usually with this kind of the tumors. Could we use this tracer before the liver transplant? I found for you quite interesting papers. As you can see, that before the transplantation to performing FDG is quite good predictive factors. Because if you see this uptake, it is very significant independent prediction of the tumor recurrence. Even this tumor to liver ratio is very low, as you can see, 1.1 and 5. And uh, these factors, this uptake of FDG, has the significant worse two years and as well the three years free survival, nearly in 50% of the patient. So, could we have uh, something more than FDG? Yes, well known by you, the choline as a member component and acetate as a fatty acid synthesis. And you know the story, this is now this, uh, this gold standard of this diagnosis of ADC. This is with the sensitivity, with the bullet sensitivity for the meta-analysis about 84%. And it's quite a typical example. You could see there's no uptake on FDG and high uptake on the choline. The same with the acetate. With the acetate, uh, is uh, the common uh, the using as a dual tracer with the sensitivity 87%. But if you perform the FDG and uh, this, uh, the, the acetate, the sensitivity is coming up 100%. And what is a typical sign of this suspicion of, of ACC? That you have this high uptake of acetate, no uptake or uptake of FDG. And as you can see, if it's FDG positive and acetate negative, it's other malignant tumor. If it is negative on the board tracer, it's high probability of benign tumors. And this is this picture of this uh, dual tracer imaging. You could see the high uptake of FDG and even more higher uptake of acetate, typical signs of the suspicion of ACC. And uh, this is uh, the meta-analysis. It is, was published just last year. And you could see that uh, with the FDG, we have the sensitivity, uh, this very uh, variety. And so with this uh, median, about the 50%, but it could be up to 70% from the 63%. And uh, this, as uh, I mentioned before, that is a very good tracer for the extra hepatic lesions. With the choline and uh, with, uh, this, uh, with this uh, acetate, it's good even for these primary tumors. And uh, this combination, uh, this dual tracer imaging, has the most sensitivity. Do we have something new? Yes, we have the quite new tracer. This is called prostate-specific membrane antigens. As you see, this is prostate-specific in the name, but we know that this is not the prostate-specific. Specific. And this ligand is uh, in a 
the, in nuclear medicine uh, in more than 20 years, but we had no so good tracer. But in 2012, it was synthesized uh, the very simple for the labeling and with the very good uh, tumor to liver ratio and uh, the agent with, uh, for the PET. And you see that over this year, from 2012, to up to today, the publication are growing and we have the more experience with this. What we know about this PSMA is that is not uh, expressed, of course, in the prostate cancer, but not only. And it could be found in this different kind of these tumors, including HCC, up to 95% in immunological staging. And that was the first example of this uh, kind of the imaging. It was imaging of the patient with the prostate cancer, and you clearly visible on the e image that is uh, this, uh, this location of the prostate, car uh, prostate gland carcinoma. But it was unexpected uh, tumor seen in this hepatic uh, area. After the surgery, it was checking, and it was HCC. As you can see, this is January. 2017, that's very, very short uh, the notice for us. What we know about this, we know that large as well the small HCC could uh, have this expression of uh, this gallium PSMA, even the colon and acetates could be negative in this patient. If you're going for this immunohistochemical staging, that we could see that this PSMA is mainly on this vascular endothelial, and it is not expressed on the, the, the tumors of the HCC. That was the first not case report publication with the seven patients with uh, 41 liver lesion. As you can see, 63 uh, from the six, uh, 36 from 37 suspected to, to be malignant was this PSMA avid, whereas this FDG only was 10 positive. In two patients, uh, in this examination, it was revealed that this, this distance metastasis, and very important, this regional, uh, red, uh, this regenerative nodules have no uptake of the boat tracer. And this is the example from this publication. You clearly see this high uptake of this PSMA, and in these tumors, it is nothing, the uptake is normal, the uptake like the normal liver from the FDG. And this is our paper published last year together with uh, this, our transplantology department. We uh, performed this examination before the surgery in 15 patients. And in visual interpretation, as you can see, in each of the patients, we saw this uptake of the PSMA. Very nice, this tumor, uh, tumor to liver uptake that we clearly see these tumors. And uh, this uptake was not uh, correlated with this uh, other uh, serum concentration paramet of uh, parameters of tumor markers. Very important from a clinical point of view. This, our examination, changed the strategy in one third of the patient. And this is it, that will be the same example from this our study. You could clearly visible this uh, non-homogeneous uptake, but it is uh, well uh, shown there on this picture. And uh, this patient had a uh, normal level of uh, this, uh, this uh, tumor markers. Uh, in histopathology, it was tumor grade two. And if you're going for this immunohistomatological Staging. You could see that we have the weak expression of the PSMA in tumors and slightly stronger in the sinusoids. We could have totally different uh, the example with the homogeneous uptake, with the high uptake on this labor uh, on this immunohistochemical staging. You could see the intense staging for the PSMA. That you could see that uh, for this histopological point of view, we have different kind of the tumors. And that was the patient that totally it was the change of the uh, treatment strategy because you could see that uh, we have this, uh, this not only the satellite lesion in the liver, but as well we saw on this examination distance metastasis to the bone. 
Just recently published on September that year, uh, there's another paper with uh, the same agent uh, in 14 patients. Mostly of this patient was treatment naive. And you could see that uh, that was a comparison between PSMA versus contrast and hand CT. And for the liver lesion, this, uh, this both modalities are quite good for 97% uh, of sensitivity. But for the extra hepatic lesion, you could see that uh, PSMA PET CT is uh, better than CT. Uh, the very important for us, once again, what we do with our patient. And with the PSMA PET, the upstaging of the disease was done for the 20% of the patient and downstaging in 5% of the patient. In general, treatment management was changed in half of the patient. And this is the example. You could clearly see this uh, hot spot in, this, uh, the, in the bone, but nearly nothing seen in the CT. That means that we, that we have this functional imaging, which is sometimes easier, to, easier to, for us to see before the changing in the anatomical imaging. And uh, from the last year, we have the one meta-analysis uh, about this using this tracer. And you could see that it was uh, 13 only this publication included for this uh, revision. Majority of them, it was the CARES report, except these three words. Uh, that's uh, one that you know, that's uh, the first publication. That is the 36 lesion, but it was seven patients. That still we have uh, this quite small number of the patient. But what was the conclusion of this? Very important that this imaging seems to be very useful for the analyzing before the surgery suspicion of HCC. Where we could use else? Uh, we could use, uh, and we're starting to use together with our colleagues from this, uh, our transplantology department, uh, to check uh, this, uh, this other kind of the treatment, like here, thermoablation. And clearly, you could see on the, before this uh, thermal ablation and uh, part of the necrosis as well, still variable part of the tumors on the second image. And this is just very recent. And this is from the last Wednesday. This is one of our first patients that we evaluate with the PET CT, with the PSMA during the taste. And you could see that before the first taste, we have this hot uptake. Uh, even you could see that sec after the first uh, this taste, this, uh, this uptake is still the same. That means it was not the liver uh, exactly the chemotherapy to the tumors. And uh, after the second the taste, I know that you are not nuclear medicine physician, but if you look for this place, you still uh, see the lipiodol that stays there, but we have still slightly uptake in these tumors. So we will be evaluating this patient. As I told you, this is just from this last Wednesday, because we have, unfortunately, this, uh, this pre the, the prediction that maybe it is not uh, this, uh, this complete, uh, this, uh, complete uh, treatment. PSMA is a very hot topic in nuclear medicine, and uh, because uh, if you see this high uptake, and we have the good target, and PSMA is uh, the good target, with uh, the diagnostic agent, we could use it for this uh, diagnosis part, but the same target, we could use only the changing isotopes for this isotope with the, high, with the higher energy and uh, low, the small range of the reactivity for the treatment. And on the right corner, you could see the example of the PSMA-based therapy for this prostate cancer patient. You could see a lot of hotspot and complete response of the treatment. And that year, it was just published vision trials for this prostate cancer patient with very promising results with this all this uh, prolongation of the survivor parameters. So this is the question. If we see this uh, uptake, if we see this expression of the PSMA on ICC, could you use this agent, the same for the therapy there? Unfortunately not. Uh, our colleagues from the Germany performed this treatment in two patients. And you could see on this eighth image that we had the, the uptake on the PET scan before with this hot lesion. 
and on D and E, this is during the therapy, uh, after the lutetium PSMA uh, the injection, that means that therapeutic agent, which is no uptake, that we see that we have washout, very quick washout for these tumors, and unfortunately, this agent can be and now used for the therapy. So, in the conclusion, take home message. Uh, please remember that FDG is not so good for the, uh, for the primary tumors, but it has uh, this high sensitivity for extrahepatic metastasis. And for you as uh, transplantology, this agent could be used before the transplant because it is the most significant independent predictor of tumor recurrence and this, uh, the prediction of the wars, these are survival parameters after this, uh, the transplantation. Acetate and choline, this is current recall standard with sensitivity about 84 87%. And prostate membrane antigen, you know that it is not specific for the prostate and even not for the cancer. It seems to be very useful for the HCC diagnosis. Of course, we have the small cohort study, but as you saw, the sensitivity is 97 up to 100%. That means that it's really promising for us. Uh, it changed the treatment strategy, very important things, up to nearly the 50% of the patient. Unfortunately, it is not therapy agent. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much. We did that in a very timely manner. We may have question, we have time for one question. Maybe I see Pietro wants to ask something. No? Are you use, I mean, this is very interesting. For me, it's novel. I mean, I must say we use the call-in. Uh, I have two, two very small questions. Do you have an advantage of the MRI versus CT for the PET, uh, whatever the three of the agents you are using? Do you think about the PET MI versus the PET The MRI CD? combined with PET for HCC, yeah. where we could in one, in one picture basically every, all the information we need. Yeah, of course, uh, but you know that uh, the cost of the PET MRI is much higher. And uh, with this, if you use this contrast-enhanced uh, agent for this MRI part, it will be the higher uptake of uh, this and it will be the change in our SUV. That means that sometimes since this one-step diagnosis is not so good in that kind of the cases, because you know for the HCC, you need to do the contrast enhance. That uh, in my opinion, of course, we have no the experience because we don't we have this PET MRI, but I think that much easier is to use this MRI and PET CT. It's also better for the lungs because, of course, for the lung metastasis, you still need a CT. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you.